Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. God bless us, everyone. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me. Well, we've arrived at Revelation 16, so let's jump right into it because there's much to be seen over the next couple episodes. Remember, John is seeing all of the stuff in heaven. The Lord keeps drawing attention to things. There's signs. There's wonders. There's angels coming forth doing all sorts of things. There's voices coming from the temple, from uh, the four elders, just uh, a cacophony of events. Well, Revelation chapter 16, verse 1 says this, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, remember there were seven angels, they had been given uh, bowls, each one of them bowls, and the, a bowl was the wrath of God. So the voice says to these seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. And we'd seen previously that these bowls were the completion of the wrath of God, of the day of the Lord. Uh, I believe that the trumpets and the bowls both are the wrath of God. Uh, we as believers, if you're a true believer, you've been promised to be spared the wrath of God. Yes. Okay. So fret not over the wrath of God, but we will experience the wrath of Satan, the great tribulation. That's what the great tribulation is. But the scripture shows us what's going to happen to those who are remaining on earth. And the reason we're told this is where we can tell them what is coming, what is happening. So he says, go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God, verse 2. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and it became a loathsome and malignant sore on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. Now what we're going to see is that these bowls come in, in very rapid succession with one another. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I believe that all these bows take place within about a 25-day period. And there's reasons for believing that. And there's, there's times that I wish we had more than a podcast because I could show you a chart. <laughs> you know, a chart's worth 1,000, 10,000 words. But uh, I believe that this is going to be taking place at the last 30-day period, uh, one of the last 30-day periods that you see at the end of the book of Daniel in chapter 12. And so the first angel pours out this bowl, and, and there's these horrible, loathsome, malignant sores, and it's on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshiped this image. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, isn't that everybody? Isn't that everybody that's left on earth? No, not necessarily. No. And you sort of get that idea from Matthew 25, okay? But that's what's going to happen with these folks. Something else we're going to see uh, is that previously we had seen that when the trumpets blew that... A third of the earth was blood, a third of the animals died, a third of the fresh water was poisoned, that kind of thing. Now, with the bowls, everything's affected. For instance, verse 3, the second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. Whereas before, only a portion of things died, now everything is affected. Everything dies. Verse 4, then the third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. So we do see parallels as to what occurred with the trumpets, okay, the same type of things, but now it's a complete, total uh, uh, destruction of everything. And people say, well, why, why blood? Why all this kind of stuff? Well, guess what? The Lord tells us why. In verse 5, now listen to this. We're going to look at these next three verses, then we'll be done for the day and pick up the, the next bows later. Verse 5, I heard the angel of the waters saying, so here's what the angel of the waters is saying, Righteous are you who are and who were, O holy one, because you judge these things. For they poured out the blood of saints and prophets, and you've given them blood to drink. They deserve it. 
whoa, that, you know, that's a really, really forthright statement. To start with, I mean, who and what is this angel of waters? We've seen that there's angels that are over fire and one over the altar. An angel of waters is rose, is responsibility, there's functioning here. And we see that within all of God's creation. There's design, there's pattern. So this angel declares to the Most High God, declares to the Lord that he's righteous and that he's holy because he is bringing forth this judgment. Sometimes people read these passages and they allow the fear of the enemy to take over in their lives. And that's not what the point of all this is. The point is to show the rightness of God. That's what righteous means, that what he is doing is correct. It is right. It is holy. He's bringing forth this judgment because man had poured out the blood of the saints and the prophets, particularly during the time of the Great Tribulation when the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, will attack Israel, the Jewish people, and the church, particularly at that time, but for all times. And he says, since you poured out the blood of saints and prophets, God gave them blood to drink. They deserve this. And so it's not as if the Lord is bringing forth an undeserved judgment. It's not as if God is being, quote, unquote, unfair. Nothing could be further from the truth. So when this angel of the waters makes a statement, listen to this, verse 7, there was a response. And I heard the altar saying, Yes, O Lord God, the Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. So it says the altar says this. And I don't know if it's those that are gathered around the altar. Or could it be the altar itself? We see some wild things that are happening uh, within glory. But it's a proclamation and an affirmation from a testimony of two right here, the angel of the waters and the voice from the altar. And it says, yes, O Lord, the Almighty. And then it agrees. True and righteous are your judgments. The judgments of the Lord God are beyond reproach. When we see these things that are happening in the last days, particularly the last moments right here, when the wrath of God is being poured out, all too often people will sit there and wonder, well, that seems to be rather harsh. Why is that occurring in that way? It's because of the sin of man and because of the righteousness of God. That's a serious thing to be considered. It is really something that will drive you to your knees and in awe and in wonder of the holiness of God. And then also, how seriously, how seriously the Lord takes rebellion and sin. Tell you what, take these things before the Lord, meditate upon them, ask Him about them. Read these passages out of uh, Revelation 16 and see what the Lord teaches you. Again, I'm Dale. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.